health. That is something I've been lacking these past few um, days in quarantine. I have been consistently eating lots of shit. And by shit, I mean junk food oh every day, 24-7. And I'm not really sure what brought me to this, um, to this kind of area. But I guess I've just always been kind of like that lazy bastard. But today is... Um, well, the first episode to a video series I'm gonna call... I'm not really sure I'm gonna call it yet. Um, you'll see what it'll be called once it's posted, but... So these videos will just be chill. They're not really gonna be super professional. It's just me walking you through my day, I guess, and telling you what my... and telling you what my later videos are going to be about. So, um, I have something in the mail that just came in today. Pretty sure that's my new knife-making supplies. Let me take a shower and see you guys. So before I do any unboxing, I'm just gonna eat some noodles first. But I also gotta put some of this stuff on too. Alright, those noodles were great. Let's just unbox these boxes now. But let me show you what I got. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of interesting things here, but we do have some new epoxy. This is Blade Bond. So this is the thing I use to attach my handles. So this is a two part. I mix the two together to make a really, really strong bond. Here we have a brand new sheet of Kydex. This is what I make my sheets out of. And for um, an example, this is a sheet made out of Kydex. Same stuff as this. This right here is a bar of steel. I need this. I'm probably going to make some more cleavers out of this. And last but not least, we have a giant block of cocaine. Ooh-wee! How much fun was that? That was a serious question. Um, I don't really do unboxings just because I think they're kind of boring. For the flesh and body of this entire video, I wanted to show you guys um, something that I've uh, made already. So here is the new RE1 complete with a kydex sheath. Um, this is part of batch 6. Um, you've already seen the other two. The other two from batch 6 was the Tokyo Stinger and the Bell Dam. This one is the RE1. So this one is very simple. It's a bit rough on the blade finish, but the handle on it is pretty exquisite. It is hella thick, hella beefy. It is a very beefy blade, and um, you saw what it did to that box. Not a lot, it was just cardboard. But we will be doing a very hardcore test on all of these knives, especially this one right here. And this one is the one I want to flesh out for you guys. This is the Tokyo Stinger. This one is a much more simpler one. You've got a really high grind, but you don't have a swedge here. One idea that I've had for it that I just came up with last night. Also, whenever you have ideas, write them down because you never know, you could just forget the idea. And you may say, well, if you forgot it, it probably wasn't important but it probably was important. It could have been something great, but you forgot it. So write shit down. So this is the Tokyo Stinger from batch six, and this is the Tokyo Stinger from batch, um, batch four. Now, if you take a look, there's a lot of differences, but they all share the same characteristics. Tokyo Stinger has to have an inwards curve on the handle and an outwards curve on the handle. See that? So it's a, uh, outwards curve and an inwards curve and on the blade it's got to share the same characteristic as well but in a kind of like an opposite kind of direction so instead of an inwards curve on the blade you'll have an outwards curve which uh, makes up for a trailing point I like trailing points and an inwards curve for kind of like that S kind of shape if you take a look at the Tokyo Stingers that I've made in the past um, few months I've made three so far 
if you take a look at the design parameters, they all share the exact same kind of parameters for it. A trailing point, an S body, and pretty much a simple design. I like my knife simple, and that's just me. The ringer isn't really simple, it's kind of like more intricate, but I haven't been focusing on the ringer lately, I've been focusing on Tokyo Stinger, and so I want to take Tokyo Stinger, and I want to make it into the, you know, do everything kind of jack of all trades knife, like the SRK. So I had some thinking, how could I do this, you know, what would I do um, differently to the current uh, renditions to make it the ultimate kind of do everything knife. Because the problem with this is that um, I grabbed the swedge on the back way too thin. It's, it's a, still a false edge, but it's just ground really thin. If you take a look at that, it's a really thin grind up here. So that ruins the strength because essentially you've got less metal now. It improves the stabbing, but um, then again, it's a jack of all trades knife. I don't want it to be a specialty for stabbing. So the super high um, swedge at the top, it needs to it needs to get steeper it can't um steeper yeah steeper um it can't be this shallow because yeah it's just gonna be weak and it's not it can't have a scandy grind like this one had because if you remember on my uh, previous channel when i posted the scandy grind actually bent when i hit it on some hardwood and we can't be having that we can't be having the circus thing of bend um if it's gonna be a hard use knife and the issue with this one is that it looks too plain, I don't know. What would the ultimate Tokyo Stinger look like? Um, like this. So I've done a lot of research on it, and this is what it would look like. Now you can pause and look at that again, but if you look at that, the only difference it really had compared to these two and the red one I made um, in February is that it has a steep secondary edge. Well, not really a secondary edge, no, no, no. It's more of a um, false edge, but it's ground, as um, kind of like more as an aesthetic appeal because um, when I'm gonna grind it I'm not gonna grind it all the way like I did with this so it's thin I'm just gonna grind it just to put it there because um, one I want the spine to be flat as possible so um, when you're batoning with it it's not gonna ruin up your baton it's not gonna chew it up and also when you're gonna be carving when you push up against your thumb onto the spine I don't want it to be too thin here so that it kind of hurts your um, your thumb when you're pushing against it. So it's there for aesthetic purposes and it's going to be there for um, kind of like the line of the knife. There's no harm in it being there anyway. Um, and I say that because I'm not going to have the grind too shallow on it. I'm going to have it really, really, really steep, but it will be you know visible enough to give off an appeal. So yeah, I'm not going to go too in-depth with that. I'll just put it in a separate video on what I want the Tokyo Stinger to be. If there was any flaw in what I just said there, you know, don't mind it because there's going to be much more improvement. That's just what I have so far. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this first episode of... I think I'm going to call it... Um, I'm not sure. Damn, I feel like I feel like Logic back in the basement when he was coming up. But hey, that's where we are so far. We're not even the underground scene yet. I mean, I guess we are in the underground scene. I do have 5,000 subscribers, but in the terms of knife making, I'm not too well known yet. So we'll have to um, we'll have to get there incrementally every day. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, stay tuned for more videos.